the good old days. Let me take you back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back. Salo falava, malole sui fuo, moa male langi e mama. Mi sambole vinaka ke muni saka na weekend mai viti. Hello everyone and welcome to Tala Noa with Tupe. This is a show where we celebrate and highlight Pacifica's success in all its many forms. Each week we sit down with a different Pacific thought leader to hear about their journey and learn from their experience. Our guest today is Izzy Ford. Deputy Mayor of Porirua, a well-known city in the Wellington region. She is a former Black Fern and the first woman appointed to the Wellington Rugby Board in 20 years. I'm looking forward to this Talanoa because I want to hear about Izzy's experience as an elite sports person, her experience in local leadership as well as a mother. Before we sit down with our guest, let's see how we go with our Blue Pacific quiz. How well do you know our region? Let's find out. Kia ora. Talofa lava. My name is Tosiri. And my name is Telesia. And, and we, we are, are members, members of... The Pacific, Pacific Social, Social Justice, Justice League. League. And we're going to give you a quiz on our blue Pacific. Let's go. Can you tell us which country this flag belongs to? Can you tell us the capital of this country? Can you tell us the name of the leader of this country? And lastly, can you tell us what currency they use in this country? Stick around to the end of the show so we can compare our answers. See you soon. Thank you to Lucia and to a CV. We'll have the answers to those questions at the end of the show. Up next, it's our segment on Pacific Literature presented by Leilani Tamu. My name is Leilani Tamu. I'm a writer and an editor, and I'm passionate about Pacifica books. The book I'm going to tell you about today is called Entangled Islands by Sari Barford and it's a collection of work that includes both poetry and short stories. Sari is a writer of Samoan descent who lives in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and she's just a phenomenal writer. The book starts with the Fa'alupenga, or Vili Vili Fa'amanu o Matangi, persevere like a bird in the wind. And I was really honoured recently to interview Sari on my website and ask her about the book. And she spoke about how this book and the body of work in here really spoke to that experience of perseverance for her and her own ways of coping and navigating the entangled island's history of her ancestors, but also of Aotearoa with the islands of the Pacific, but it particularly Samoa. I'm just going to read you a little bit of the poem Entangled Islands, which opens the collection. I want to make a falasu'i for my bed to brighten the cold side of the house. I'll embroider stories from my time on the islands with colorful wool and the big-eyed needle. This is such a beautiful collection. It will make you cry and it will make you laugh. I highly recommend it. Enjoy. If you like this review and you'd like to read more reviews or you'd like to contribute a review yourself, please check out my website. Faftai lava lelani. After the break, we're joined by Izzy Ford, 
Deputy Mayor of Porirua, a well-known city in the Wellington region, former Black Fern and the first woman appointed to the Wellington Rugby Board in 20 years. Welcome back to Talanoa Tupe. Today in the studio, I'm joined by Izzy Ford, Deputy Mayor of Porirua, a well-known city in the Wellington region. She is a former Black Fern and the first woman appointed to the Wellington Rugby Board in 20 years. Welcome to the show, Izzy. Oh, Talofa, thank you very much. It's awesome to have you here. Yeah, it's awesome to be here with you as well. Yeah, there's um, a lot that I want to cover in this okay. interview. Mm -hmm. um, but first, uh, let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you were born um, in Porirua to Samoan parents. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about your background. Ah, so yes, you've hit uh, two critical elements of my upbringing, Samoan and in Porirua, and, and obviously two immigrants that came from Samoan decided on Porirua to raise us. Um, I am um, one of five, um, and we come from humble beginnings, I guess, mm. the whole thing, the whole immigrant story of um, um, people trying to start out fresh. We were, ve I think we were very lucky back in those days. Well, mum and dad were when they came. They um, managed to um, build their own home in Porirua. They chose mm. Porirua. They had options. They, they could either build a home in Wainoyamata or Porirua. They chose Porirua. They saw something special there. And so from there, we were raised, I guess, and um, from very humble beginnings under a national uh, party. Actually, there was a, a program that allowed them to build their first home, um, get themselves into a first home. And then it wasn't it was uh, Labour parties. I thought, geez, I can't help but talk about um, it, party. Uh, and I try <laughs> about not politics. to about <laughs> politics, but somehow it goes if I you know track my life back, there are those different political parties that have helped mum and dad make their way through and and us as well guide us along the way mm. but as well as that there is also um, my catholic faith as well um, that has helped keep me grounded um, that has helped me with my values and and helped mm. me along the way um, because a lot of that catholic belief has helped me with some of the decisions i make later on in my life that, yeah. that i've made later on in my life um, but also being able to see mum and dad and um, what they did in the days they were you know like serving the, the community that we lived in but also serving the community back home mm. so that you know i got to see a um i don't know i had front row seats to see that in action yeah yeah that it's mm. not just about the family that's here and it's almost at at um you know like at no at, at all cost you've got to serve the people here but also those who are back home that you've left behind yeah. so yeah so that um those elements you've touched on faith community service mm. And then, um, I guess the effect of like political or policy decisions yeah. that have the effect that that has had on your family life. Yeah. Those kind of the three elements of your background mm. play a big part in your yeah. life today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think you know it's ever evolving. Like uh, back in the day, even though it was a national party that helped them get into their first home, build. You know, who would thought? immigrants that have been here for, uh, they were here for three years and they managed to build, you don't hear that nowadays. But it was it was then the Labour Party that had the different policies that helped them keep those homes as well and then be able to afford to live in that first time as well. So all the way along the line, there has been those policies that mm. have been implemented by different parties that have helped us get to this point yeah. in time. Mm. And of course, housing is such a big issue mm. nowadays. Yeah. And also one of the factors that can influence um, the wealth yes. um, that people have is home ownership yeah, yeah. and of course Pasifika have very low home ownership yeah, rates, right. less than 20% of yeah. Pasifika own yeah. their own homes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's so awesome that your parents were able to yeah. to come to New Zealand as yeah. new immigrants yeah. and straight off the bat own their own home. Yeah, yeah, or mm -hmm. build their own home, yeah, yeah which is cool. And Porirua. <laughs> so, um, Another big part of your life has been elite sport. So mm. you are a black fern. Mm. What are the lessons that you learned from elite sport that you carry with you today? Mm. Yeah, so um, uh, there's so many. I mean, there's heaps of attaches that I can come up with. You know, lessons from playing for the sil uh, for the black ferns. I always wanted to be a silver fern. That's why that kind of. <laughs> but out yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dang it! There's still time. Um, but yeah, so anything that's worth having is going to take a lot of hard work is probably the main thing. There are going to be heaps of ups and downs, 
Um, you know, I mean, I wasn't selected when I first trialled for the Black Ferns, but um, and the thing that I learnt that I probably take with me is if you want to succeed in whatever it is that you want to succeed in, you have to be passionate about it. Mm. You have to be surrounded by other people who are like-minded. Um, and if you don't, you're not going to get there. You need to um, be informed. Uh, so that is just... Like I was doing things back in those days. I was having a pie and a and a can of coke for breakfast, you know, without <laughs> realizing I was fueling my body incorrectly. Yeah. So in order for me to make the next step, I had to fuel my body correctly. I had to train. I had to do all those things. I didn't deserve to be in the black ferns. Um, yeah. So you're not owed anything. You have to work hard, and so that's probably one of the main things that I know. If you want something you are going to work hard for it. You have to work hard for mm. it. And then I think that's been transferable into my life as well. Um, mm. You know, if you want to get elected, you have to do the hard work. You have to find out from other people. You have to surround yourself with good people around you as well who are moving in the same direction. But also on the flip side is for every one person that is uh, wanting you to succeed, there are five others who are trying to drag you down. And, and you've got to uh, come to terms with that sort of when you're, mm. um, especially when you're in the public, um, when you've got a public profile, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you achieved something in sport mm. um, in terms of becoming a black fern, and then you became the first woman in 20 years to be on the board of Wellington um, Rugby. Mm. Yep, the Wellington Rugby Board. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and in New Zealand, only 30% of um, directors are women. Mm. So we've still got a long way to go mm. in terms of encouraging uh, women into boards and yeah. Basifika into yeah. boards. Yeah. Um, so what, what kind of challenges um, did, you know, did you encounter in that arena? Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, it, it, it does suck, really, um, putting it plainly. And I think... Um, when, when I look at sports, and yeah, as you say, it's no secret. I, I thought it was, it's, um, you know, having one woman on a board of directors that have nine members in it. It's, you know, we got to do better than that. Mm -hmm. And when you look at sport, I think sport is really important to um, New Zealand because it's almost like a snapshot of, of what New Zealand looks like. And with women um, participating, or the numbers of women and young women who are participating, taking up sport, climbing and then it to not be reflected in um, yeah. management in governance but not even that just in, in in coaching even we still don't have our first black ferns female coach uh, there are uh, different um, you know unions that still haven't had their first woman coach to take over the women's team mm -hmm. um, so there are those the challenges have always been about um, being able to move to the side and pull up the next woman into those governance roles. Yeah. The challenge is also around um, not reacting when um, people mistake you for, um, you know, a plus one as opposed to the person who's on the governance yeah. roles. There's, there's those challenges as well. But it's always about, um, for me, I think, when I'm in those, um, when I traverse those um, spaces, it is about trying to um, make it, more accessible, making it more um, to the next generation and to the next group of people, the next crop of females that are, mm. um, and just letting them know that you have, um, everyone has a certain amount of skills that you can offer in these roles. It is not, um, I think there was a tendency for me to believe that a role of governance or the role of um, being an elected member on council was for a specific type. There was a specific type that could do it. And the specific type was not me because I didn't see me on the council or on the board of directors for Wellington Rugby Union. So the challenge is to um, be more visible and show people that, that this is what it looks like. It's, mm. you know, I don't, um, I don't profess to, to know governance inside out, but I do offer grassroots skills that uh, benefit the end user, yeah. which is what a lot of our people have. Mm. I find it so surprising that there still hasn't been a woman coach mm. in a lot of, um, I guess, elite sports yeah. for women. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that really does bring it home, like, how important it is to mm. have uh, women on the governance boards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of advice would you offer people who are wanting to get into governance and who are thinking, yeah. oh, that 
probably isn't for me. Yeah, well, I would suggest do it. So I, yeah, it's funny um, just being in those roles. I've had a few of my own friends um, ask me, oh, you know, do you think I should put my name in for school boards? And that was my stepping stone was a school board. And I, um, my advice to them is always, yes, I mean, first, my, like when my close friends have said to me, oh, you know, I'd, I'd like to do it. Do you think I should? I was, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Then after, um, you have to make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. So um, the friends that I've spoken to have always been, you know, they want to be involved in some of the decision making for their child and, um, you know, or introducing policies that will benefit children wide. So, you know, we all want to do it for the right reasons, yeah. I believe. And so it's just encouraging. That's the first step is encouraging this next group to, yes, go for it. Second thing is just trying to put in a support network for them just to be there. If you've got any queries, come and see me. I'm happy to answer anything because sometimes, you know, we tend to make things a whole lot more complicated than what they really are. Mm. And so just, yeah, that, that I think is, I would say, go for it. Yeah. Mm. I think it does take a lot of guts to step into a space where you don't see yourself reflected. Mm. Did you find that succeeding in a male dominated sport like rugby, did mm. that give you an advantage in the mm. professional world? Uh, yes and no, but um, so I guess I was playing rugby back in the time when uh, we were getting hand-me-downs, not from the premier men's team, but from the Colts team. So we, it was almost like, you know how you get your <laughs> older sister's hand-me-downs and we were getting the, the aunties and the, you know, just from all over the place. So we kind of felt like, and that was just at club playing for Norths, playing for Wellington was sort of similar. We had to battle, you know, day in, day out to get gear to wear, just to look like a team. Yeah. Um, and then playing for the Black Ferns, that was before contracts were out. So there was always the battle to, you know, like try and get gears, make, making sure we got the exposure, the same exposure that our male counterparts were getting. So I guess in a way it did make us, um, we were kind of like the underdogs and moving into a professional world, you do feel like you have to scrap for every little bit that you're getting. Yeah. So um, yeah, I guess in some ways it is. In other ways, I just think, well, we're, we're just women and we just get on with things anyhow. Mm. Um, and I like to think that that's a lot of um, what is part of the DNA of, a, of being a woman as we just get on with it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. So you've been serving as a, um, a local councillor for mm. seven years now mm. and four of those years as deputy mayor. Mm. Uh, and you're probably the only Pacifica person mm. um, who's deputy mayor in the country. Mm. Um, what motivated you to serve yeah. as a city councillor? Mm. Yeah, well, I guess the, from those early beginnings, I got to see, you know, front row seats, seeing mum and dad do the same thing, serving community. They were on PTAs at the time. I wanted um, some kind of way to give back to my community as well. And um, yeah, for some reason, uh, and I had a close friend of mine who said, you know, put your name in the hat. Why don't you, if not you, then who? You know, mm -hmm. that, that comes up. Um, but yeah, no, I... I think that motivates me. The other thing is I know I'm not going to be in this position for long. No one in local government should be in positions for longer than they, you know, there is an expiry date. We should be here to do as much effect, as much change as we possibly can and then move on. It's time for mm. us to move to the side and pull up the next generation who are going to affect change. So that's what motivates me is to try and affect as much change as I possibly can in this term and maybe one last term. Um, and then the other thing is that I know my children will ultimately inherit the, you know, the city that we live in. Mm. So it's trying to make sure that they'd be proud of the city that, yeah. that they're going to inherit. Mm. And not just my kids, you know, all the other kids as well, all, all the um, children of Porirua. Mm. 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 How has your Samoan heritage influenced your approach to, um, to, to public service? Mm. Yeah, it's almost part and parcel way eh, at being Samoan and, and um, there is that saying, you know, ole, ala pule ole tautua, you know, the, the pathway to service is through um, serving, oh, sorry, to leadership, leadership is through serving. serving. Yeah. So there is that and, and um, you know, without a doubt that is, again, we saw that growing up. We see that in, in our, um, I saw that in my church. I saw... Um, yeah, a lot, you know, I, I mean, I go back to, I, I don't even realise we were poor growing up. You know, mum and dad, they were cleaners, they were they were labourers, they were all that stuff. And you see the struggle, you see, um, yeah, them, despite the little they had, still being able to serve their communities. 
um, and I guess that sort of yeah that kind of that drives you to to want to do the same um, and and the, but in saying that um, my Samoan heritage has got uh, my upbringing has got something to do with why I do it but having been married into um, a Caucasian um, family and into, when I married Glenn and married into his family I realized that they have similar traits to us they similar values they have um, they sacrifice they serve their you know I always thought that it was Pacifica who just served the elder you know their elders or that they sacrifice and stuff but it is very much across the board that his family I saw it with his mum she was solo mum raising her children she was um, helping to raise her elderly parents same thing happens in Pacific families but what I do see from my Samoan heritage, from my Samoan family, is we take it to the next level. You know, we take it to the point where we are going to sacrifice um, to the detriment sometimes of our own families, and that for our next generation, we need to think about shifting our thought. We need to be able to give, to be able to sacrifice, but not so that it's at the effects of the well-being of the ones that are closest to us. Mm. So I think. The, yeah, the, this next generation definitely needs to have a little thought around that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, something that a lot of us who are, you know, living in New Zealand and having to straddle two worlds mm. do have to think about is yeah. how to draw the best from both worlds. Yes, and I suppose that comes um, closer to home when yeah. you're married, um, you know, into a Bailangi family yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, without mm -hmm. a doubt. Yeah. Okay, so I want to delve more into this, but we have to take a break now. Okay. So let's come Sweet. back after the break. Sweet. Welcome back to Talanoa with Tupe. We're here in the studio with Izzy Ford. So Izzy, can you tell us a little bit about um, the pressures that come with being a Pacific mm. person in mm. a public role? Mm. Yeah, so um, I guess the, the main uh, pressure or challenge would have been, you know, we normally get it quite right in Potirua in that we elect a pretty diverse group of people, and we have previously, so we've had some pretty strong Pacifica um, female role models that have been elected, so trying to continue their um, strong-minded, um, strong-mindedness, respectfully, is um, always a challenge to try and get things across the table when you're around that council table, channeling their their energy, um, but respectfully as well, because they they have everyone's got their own way of um, debating, uh, and trying to do it respectfully is probably one of the main challenges as a Pacifica around the council table. In terms of out in the community, there are different challenges. So quite a lot of our people see us as the grassroots connection to anything that's to do with governance. So that could be a government, that could be council stuff. So I find myself um, quite often being the conduit for our people, trying to mm -hmm. um, give them the pathway to where they might need the support or where they might need someone to go into bat for them, so to speak. So I get um, approached for issues around health, around housing, all things that fall outside of council, but um, given that we are the public face that they see, yeah. and a lot of our Pacifica people have issues around uh, being able to communicate or articulate what they need support with, then we are that person, and I love being that person, but quite often we can't always help them. Mm. So being able to um, understand their challenges and given the life that I have been raised in, seeing the struggle that our Pacifica go through, I'm able to approach that with empathy. And um, yeah, so that, that can often be quite challenging because you can see that people are, you know, they have their struggles. How do you help them through? How do you guide them to the, the support yeah. that they really do need? So mm -hmm. yeah, that can be quite challenging. Mm. Yeah, I think that's challenging for a lot of people, uh, understanding the difference between central government and yes. local government. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you have language barriers, mm. Um, so that's why it is so important to have yeah. people in roles like yours so that they, yeah, I mean, I guess they, people, um, in a sense, would just be relieved to have someone yeah. who knows something yeah. about, For sure. you know, where to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, when I first was elected, I, w I didn't always know. In fact, I still don't know everything as well. 
but um, one thing I can guarantee them is that I will get the support that they need because I sort of get a gist of where they need to be and I can go into those different spaces and, and find the help that they need. Mm. Um, and as you say, yeah, it's just it's reassuring, I think, for our people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some people often, like, a, I most of the time I do, like, say I'm, I'm Samoan, I haven't always done that, but some people mistake me for Cook Island, so I get a lot of Cook Island um, callers too. Yeah. Um, and that's part and parcel of the job, yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, so you mentioned before that one of your motivations for being involved in uh, local politics was your children. Yeah. So you and um, Glenn have three children. Mm. How do you balance being a mum as well as uh, being involved in the leadership of the mm. city? Yeah. Yeah, you just do it. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, you just you kind of just get on with it really and just do it. But in, in saying that as well, I've got a massive um, co-partner in crime, Glenn. He's amazing. Um, so there's, I think, yeah, there's no way I, I could do what I do without his support. Um, we've also got a fantastic group of support around us. And you know like how they say the village, yeah. we have a village of supporters, um, not, not just my relations, but also, you know, like the sports clubs that the kids belong to. Yeah. There's three of them, they both, they all three of them play golf. So, and sometimes one will be playing in Parapara Umu, the other one will be playing in, Mir in Miramar and the other one in the middle. We can't be in all three places at one time, but our, the Judgeford club will jump in and support, you know, we'll take one of them and we will be in the other two places. So we've got that support, we've got the support at school. So there's, you know, um, I think the important thing I think to take away from being able to do what I do is is having open communications, building relationships with the people that are around you. So we have a fantastic school community that is supportive and help us uh, as well. We've got some um, fantastic church community that is there to support, sports clubs that are there to support. And also, I mean, you know, I'm fortunate to be working alongside Anita Baker, um, who's mm. our mayor, and she's also very supportive. She's very tough, has a very tough exterior, but is actually very soft as well. So um, that makes it easier to do my role as well. Yeah, yeah. having a supportive partner and a village. Yes, yep, yep, <laughs> yep. yep. Cool. In short, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so you mentioned that three of your children, well, all of your children, yeah. all three of them, yeah. um, are talented golfers, mm. and uh, in particular, your son, uh, your older son, Jaden, is making a name for himself on the international stage. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, how do you, um, I guess, yeah, how do, how do you manage that side of things that your kids are now going into elite sport yeah. and how, um, like, with that talent also, you know, you have to prepare them mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. dealing with the pressures yeah. of elite yeah. sport. How are you preparing yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. So um, Jaden's played golf from when he was three, four years old. Um, started out at Tidai Bay Golf Club. And, um, you know, when he was five, we went to America for the first time because there was nothing here in New Zealand that, for juniors yeah. to play and to play competitively. So we went to the States. We thought, oh, yeah, we'll go over there. There's apparently a junior tournament over there. Let's go and check it out. And in his mind, as this little five-year-old, he was going over there to win had no idea. So we went, there was a group of 40 other juniors who were from around the world. So they were from Philippines, South Africa, they were from all over the world that were playing. And they had been playing for ages and they had their own swing coaches. They had all these psych um, doctors that were with this, you know, they had a team around them. Jaden had me and Glenn. And for him to go there and, and he had these high expectations, you know, I'm going to go over there and win, blah, blah, blah. And he came 20th, so, or 19th. 19 out of 40 and he was devastated so it was almost like the first lesson that he had was as a five-year-old going over to compete so from there i think um grew this uh, you know where i was thinking oh we're just going for experience you know mm. just for fun almost yeah and so from that day we realized we've got to you know how do we for four or massage the disappointment for when um you don't win and you and then you revert automatically back to your own sporting um you know, journey and you realise of oh, actually son, children, you're going to have losses, you, you know, in fact, you're probably going to have way more losses than you're going to have wins. Yeah. But that feeling that you feel will be used to fuel you into trying to do well. It will fuel you to get informed, to, mm. to have people around you that are moving in the same direction. All those things started to come to um, mind and so you start feeding that into your child. And then, yeah, so uh, that message continues we say that to him quite often this too shall pass you know that feeling yeah. of oh yuck i just 
came second or I came 19th or whatever, that'll pass. But it should fuel you to work harder because anything worth having is going to take a lot of hard work. Mm. And a coach wants to do I remember my Black Ferns coach, Daryl Sorcer, was saying to me, you know, if it was easy, everyone would be a world champion. Yeah. So, you know, that is another thing we said, you know, if it was easy, everyone would be a world champion. So it takes time, it yeah. takes work, it takes losses, a whole lot of losses before you start seeing the fruition, you know, yeah. that starts to uh, bloom and become you know, something that you can hold on to. Yeah, mm. totally. And you almost learn more from your losses than oh, you totally. do from your wins. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't feel like it when you're going through those losses. It doesn't feel like, you know, at the time. And, and I think because we've been through that, we can, mm. you know, I've been through that and I can tell them, look, and, you know, I, I never got selected in the Black Friends when I first started. I got two two minutes on during the trial, didn't even touch the ball and thought I should still get in. But, mm. you know, there's, there's those things that you can either bounce back or just let it consume you. So, yeah, the goal yeah. is for him to just continue growing and recognise each event is just the experience. And again, along the way, there will be people who will be your fans and there will be people who are not your fans. Yes. So, mm. yeah, so many really good life lessons yes. to be learned from sport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. whole, yeah, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> uh, so what is your advice for anyone who wants to get into governance mm -hmm. or anyone who wants to get involved mm -hmm. at the, um, in, in local body politics? Yeah. How do you get started? Yeah, the first step, hey, what, what do you do? Well, um, yeah, I guess going back to what I said previously is you've got to make sure you're in it for the right reasons, number one. But number two um, would be, you know, give it a go. There are people out there that are willing to help you into those positions. There are also, if you're going down the conventional way, which is do the co um, governance courses, you can do that too. But there are like I like to say there you have skills that you can offer you don't need that as well that can enhance your um, mm -hmm. chances of being able to govern correctly but you also get given those um, sessions when you're actually elected or when you're in those roles as well there is that opportunity if you've got a burning desire to make effect change and if you've got a voice then you can do it basically yeah 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 awesome mm. yeah and it sounds like um, you know Going back to what we were talking about before, how um, there's such a need for people in these positions, mm. um, both in order to um, you know affect change and make sure that we have women coming through mm. in um, you know into the top positions yeah. that we have Basifika people coming yeah. through, but also um, for the public facing element of yes. it, yeah. um, so that Izzy's not answering all the questions herself. We need yeah. more Pacific yes. people in these and positions. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I mean, you know, we we've got to. I think as for me in this position, I've got to recognise too when it's my time to step aside. Can't be in this role forever. No one should be in these roles forever. And it's it's almost the onus is on us to mentor the next group of mm. um, champions for our city and for yeah, yeah in these spaces. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you could grow that pool of people. We totally do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm. Okay, I have some quick fire questions oh my gosh. for you. Yeah. Okay, so number one, what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh my goodness. Oh my god! Oh, like you don't want to hear this karaoke voice. Um, <laughs> I'd probably be something from Whitney Houston. Nice, <laughs> straight to the top. I like it. Okay, who was the most influential Pacifica person you knew of growing up? Uh, probably Winnie Laban. Mm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, if you weren't in your current profession, what would you be doing now? Mm. Um, I'd probably be a professional TikToker. No, no. <laughs> Aren't you already? Kid. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I really wanted to be a maths teacher when I was younger, actually. Far out. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. If you could invite any three people to a, in history mm. to a family dinner, who would it be? Mm. Nelson Mandela, um, Muhammad Ali. Yes. Who would the third person be? Mary, the mother of Jesus. Wow, mm. what an interesting mix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And how do you want to be remembered? Um, 
Uh, hard nut, I think. Someone who just <laughs> did their work and got on with it. I think I'd like to, yeah, be known as that. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for all your pearls of wisdom. I'm sure you've inspired many people to just get out there and give it a try and get on with it. Awesome. Really <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, Tupi. You're Thanks. welcome. <laughs>
But I 